This is the 2023 Honda Ridgeline. It's the RTL trim level that I borrowed from my friends at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana. You can see the price on the screen right now. That way nobody's asking in the comments section, Tom, what's the price? As if you never saw it. You see it. So, you know that problem is taken care of. So, we're going to answer the question as to why this is the gentleman's truck. And part of that comes with the independent rear suspension back here a smoother ride quality. A lot of people who buy these ridge lines, maybe they're retired, maybe they've already spent many decades with the typical rough and tumble style of truck that's out there that definitely gets the job done that a truck's going to do, but now they don't need something like that that's so big and burly, so to speak, but they still want the functionality of a truck, but maybe a little bit more refined ride quality. So let's look at exactly what we have here. You're going to have the LED headlights and then the LED fog lights, which I think you can see down there. Yeah, we'll give you a good view of that. And the nice turn signal housing right here. Make sure you use those because they look good. And one thing you'll notice here with this truck is that it does have a little bit of a not so squared off front end. The way it comes to the side like this, helping with aerodynamics for arrow to flow or air to flow and improve arrow right here to this corner air curtain. That's going to allow air to go through improving gas mileage. And even though this may not be the largest truck out there, it does still need a little bit of help in that area. So Honda gives it that. And we're going to have the power adjustable heated but manually folding side view mirrors. The turn signal indicators are built in right there. And let's take a look at the remote. You do have a remote start there, so that's always a good thing. It's not too big of a remote, so it's not going to be uncomfortable in your pocket, that's for sure. You have the smart key with the walk away feature. You can set that to lock the truck when you're so many feet away. You can also use the button right here to gain access to the interior or lock the doors depending on what your situation is. And it does have the sidestep right here. And that's really more for cosmetic purposes not necessarily required. And one thing about that is while this truck may not be the most off-road capable, it does have off-roading capabilities, especially with standard all-wheel drive. As of 2021, front-wheel drive gone on these trucks. So if you buy one, no matter what trim level it is, this is what you're going to have, all-wheel drive. And what about tire and wheel size? 245 on the width, 60 on the sidewall size. So going to help with your ride quality having a taller sidewall that way it absorbs bumps in a much better manner than a lower profile tire would and they're wrapped around 18 inch wheels and in the same manner as all-wheel drive is standard on this truck so is the engine and transmission setup it's going to be a 3.5 liter honda v6 280 on the horsepower 262 on the torque made it to a nine speed automatic transmission. And how about those all important, especially in these days with higher gas prices, MPGs, 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined. And Honda says you should use 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive within the confines of this truck. You're gonna find access here to the 19 and a half gallon gas tank. So that kind of helps to make a little bit more sense of that 4.8 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. And for people who gripe about this truck not really being a truck, one thing that definitely will give you a truck feel is if you lift this hood, it is anything but light. And what is a truck without the ability to tow and to haul? Obviously, this truck does come with a hitch receiver. You can see it right there. You've got your dual exhaust back here as well. But here's the thing, you're looking at being able to tow between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds. Now, this tailgate does open in the conventional manner. And the thing that I like here is that I've never seen a ridge line that doesn't come with a bed liner. A lot of the higher priced full size and even mid size trucks out there, they may be high priced and they may be a little bit more truck than what we have here, but they don't come standard with a bed liner. So that's a good thing here. You're going to have the in-bed lighting right here. There are four total tie downs, two in the front, two in the rear, and on both sides. Now, the thing that's nice here is the fact that you don't have those really large fender wells protruding into the interior of the bed. So that means you can haul things back here that you might not in other trucks as easily. Sheetrock, plywood, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you would need to have the tailgate down 
and maybe even tie it in place there, but that's a big advantage. Another big advantage here is the fact that this is a multi-use tailgate in that, well, you can see how it opens right here. And that helps in a lot of ways, not only in the obvious way that if you needed to reach in here and grab something that was just in here, whatever it is, and not have to lower the tailgate because of where things fit if it comes to this point, for example, right here, that helps. But there's also another reason. You have the lockable bed trunk right here. So with the bed trunk, you can obviously lock that. That's good in this day and age because people like to take anything they possibly can. And the harder you make it to gain access, the better off you are. And the bed trunk itself, it's really a great multitasker. These areas right here have partitions that you can have put in. You can take them in and take them out when you want to, but you can put those in and partition this area off. It's great for tailgating, things like that. You can not only tailgate and put ice in here, ice down your drinks and snacks, and it's really a neat thing, but also you can take those out and spray down dirty gear, boots and whatever, and then whatever the case is, when it's time to either hose down the muddy water and clean this area out or just drain the ice, melted ice, when it turns into water, obviously it all comes out right here a standard feature, very nice with that built-in drain plug, if I can get that back in there. But that's not the only purpose of this area back here. You also have the spare tire back here as well. Now let's see here if I can do this. Okay, that was not too hard to do. So I'm gonna take this one out. I don't know if the other tray bolt, as these are called, that's what that is, is gonna be as easy to get out. And there's a reason why I say that. There we go, I did get it out. It was a little bit harder, but I say this. A lot of the time these will come from the factory with these tray bolts practically torqued down. It's almost as if somebody thought they were in a strongman competition and they were trying their best to tighten those down as tightly as possible. If you ever take those out and put them back in, make sure you don't over tighten them because you'll regret that down the road one day. And why exactly would you need to take those tray bolts out? Well, obviously to take the tray that holds the spare tire and all the tools to change the tire and the little funnel, if you ever run out of gas and need to put gas in using a gas can, you just slide that down into the capitalist fuel fill area and you're good to go. But it allows you to put everything in place and make it easy to gain access to the spare tire and everything else that's there. Obviously all of this is made to work this way. It works really well. Very interesting to see how this truck is set up, definitely unlike any other on the market. Now there's no doubt that this is a great interior, but if I was going to change one thing here, when Honda redesigns the Ridgeline, what would I add? Door bins. You need door bins back here for the rear seat passengers, but that doesn't mean this area is completely without because on both the passenger side or the driver's side over there and the passenger side here, you do have the cup holder and a little bit of storage right there. Fairly soft right here with the armrest. Very comfortable area for somebody to put their arm. You're gonna have the contrast stitching, the white contrast stitching with the jet black interior. Now here's something that a lot of you might like. The fact that you have, if I can get this to come up, let's see, okay, we gotta release it like that. Let's remember Tom to do that. Yes, I'm gonna tell myself that before someone does in the comments, but Big advantage here, it's kind of similar to the magic rear seats of the 2022 and earlier, the first generation of the HRV. Obviously you can raise both sides up and take advantage of space here. So if there's something you need to put in the bed, but instead it will fit here in the rear area and it's raining and you want to keep it dry, well, here's your advantage or opportunity for that. That is a good thing and you're going to have the seat back pockets right here and these seats are fairly far back there is a lot of space back here by the way let's see here let me show you the headroom see there you go for those of you who like to see me on camera hi <laughs> so there we go with that and then we're going to have the dual air conditioning vents no connectivity back here in the rear area as far as the rtl trim level goes but you step up to rtle you definitely will find that also the fold down armrest right here with the cup holders built in. And I like the layout here because here's the thing, a lot of cup holders are right here. So if there's cups on either side, well, one or the other passenger in the rear area, well, they can't use the armrest. They can only use the cup holders. Here, you've got cup holders where you can still take full advantage of the armrest. That is nice. 
And something I always like to bring up, we do have the conventional size sunroof. One of the things about redesigning the Ridgeline, hopefully to, for 2024, we haven't got any confirmed information on that yet, but if that does happen, would you ever see a panoramic sunroof here? Maybe an option for no sunroof or stick with the conventional size. And for those who are saying, hey Tom, you forgot to tell us the payload numbers. Well, they range between a gentlemanly like 1,509 up to 1,583 pounds. Okay, I don't know if that's gentlemanly like, but it just seemed like the right thing to say. Now, if you happen to be a door bin snob, well, you're not going to want to sit in the rear. You're going to sit in the front because you do have door bins here for the passenger side door, the upper and the lower. Quite a bit of space there. You can fit a lot of snacks, a couple of drinks, whatever you want up there. Or if you're in good shape and you don't eat all the sugary snacks, you know, protein bars and maybe some protein powder, or a couple of post or pre-workout drinks up there, whatever the case is. Gentlemen do work out, by the way, and go to the gym. So the soft touch materials here, again, comfortable armrest with the jet black interior, the white contrast stitching. And while this is the RTL trim level, you still wind up with power seats for the driver and the passenger, as you can see here. Now, one thing that's interesting here is they're heated only. If you live in Canada, you get heated and ventilated. Not quite sure why that is, but it is what it is. And the gloveless glove box, I knew there weren't gonna be any gloves in the glove box, but that's what it's called. You could pile a ton of gloves in there if you wanted to. So there's that space. Now, right here, you do have some storage space. You can put some more protein bars and whatever you want up there, or if you eat candy bars and Snickers and Skittles and whatever, all that stuff can stack up here and fit nicely, nicely stacked. It can look gentlemanly. And then if you're saying, well, I'd like to have a wireless charging pad right here, you're gonna have to step up to the RTLE and above to get that. And we do have connectivity here, unlike in the rear seat area. So the 12 volt and the USB, and then right down here is the center console. I always think of a garage door when I open that. For some reason, it's not really a lid. It's more like a garage door. More connectivity, another 12 volt, another USB, and a lot of space within armrests for the front seats here. And right here, if your kids are being good in the back seat, well, or the grandkids maybe, well, you can give them the kind eyes with the conversation mirror. Or if they're not being good, you can give them the angry eyes. But make sure you do that when you're sitting still and not driving. Otherwise, I might get your bad driving on video during a vehicle visionary test drive. It does happen a lot. Here are the controls for the power sunroof and rear window. And now let's move over to the driver's side and see what you'll find there. And by the way, one thing about the fit and finish of these trucks, you can tell a lot by how the doors close. You do have to close them a little bit hard, not terribly, but if you do it too lightly, they're not gonna close all the way, but you can hear that sounds good. Good fit and finish. Very good. That's always a good sign on any vehicle. You can tell a lot by how the doors open and close. So let's take a look at what we have here on the driver's side. There is the button to open the capless fuel fill, just so you can see that for your door, gas door right there. And then we have two settings. Yes, even here on the RTL trim level, two settings for seat memory and everything else that you would expect to find here. Power locks, power windows, you can lock the windows. Now, one thing you don't see here are child safety locks. And you might say, well, that's weird. Does that not come on the RTL trim level? It comes on all of the trim levels, but they're located here on the rear door. So when they're in the down position, that button right there, that means the child safety lock is active. When it's up like that, that means it's inactive. In case you wondered, that is on both sides. And here are the controls for the side view mirrors, those power side view mirrors, adjusting those. If you want to drive in econ mode, well, there you go. And some of the safety features. You do have Honda sensing here, which is going to be road departure mitigation, emergency braking assist, blind spot monitoring. All of that is here. There's a quick look at the dashboard. Pretty simplistic, but yet a lot there that you can go through and learn about with your vehicle and see what's going on and all that good stuff. You do have adaptive cruise control, by the way. And there are shifter paddles here, so you can drive in sport mode, which is here we are in drive, and then we'll go into sport, which I've got the screen set up incorrectly to show you that. You also have other driving modes. We're gonna go through that now. Normal, 
snow, mud, and sand so the truck can handle quite a few different terrains. And these trucks do very well in the snow, by the way. Now, one thing, if you've never had a truck or a car or an SUV with a center screen like this and you're saying to yourself, oh man, I'm really nervous about that, this is a good place to start because it's so simple, easy to learn, Honda makes that simple. So obviously you can pair your phone, but now I will tell you, you will need the USB cable to do that. So it's not wireless in that respect, but not a big deal necessarily. Hopefully we will see that because we're seeing it come on other vehicles, the new HRV, the new CRV. So hopefully when they redesign the Ridgeline, kind of crossing our fingers for 2024, maybe we'll see that there. Dual zone climate control here, you can sync those together or you can have them separate so whoever's sitting on the passenger side doesn't have to have the same temperature as the driver does. Here is how you will activate those heated only seats. But you know what, depending on where you live, well, that could be a big benefit. Push button start. And that leaves us with one more thing. And that would be the test drive. By the way, two more things I do want to cover before the test drive. You do have the multi-view rear camera, so you've got three different views here. As you can see, if you need to back up to a trailer, well, there you go, that makes that super simple. And then we're gonna go back into park and I want to show you some. In fact, I'll go into drive actually to show this. It could come, kind of be a bad habit if you're not used to or you're used to driving a vehicle where you push the ignition off, you turn the engine off, and it automatically goes into park. I was actually riding with somebody one day who did that, and the car kept rolling because they were so used to just hitting the button right there, and it was still in drive. When you turn the ignition off, it automatically goes into park. And I believe it will do the same thing when you open the driver's side door. So let's give that a test and see if I'm right about that. I am right about that. I will say this, it is only on the driver's side door where that feature is going to work. Okay, we're gonna get out on the road for our test drive. And you know, I still would love to have the opportunity to really put this truck through its paces off-road. I know it's it's limited to what it can do, but it can definitely get through some snow and sand and mud and all that kind of stuff. It may not be Jeep capable or anything like that, but it still can hold its own in that respect. There's quite a bit of video footage on Honda's website where you can actually see that taking place. But for now, we'll just have to handle the kind of almost off-roading experience in some areas at least of here in Northwest Louisiana. So when it boils down to it, the ride quality is one of the greatest selling points of this truck. It's comfortable. It's not typical of a truck because it's not meant to haul as much as a typical truck or do some of the things that trucks do. I know a lot of you are always asking for more uh, body clearance or more ground clearance, I should say, and uh, even low range gearing. That's kind of interesting to hear because a lot of people talk about how they, even when their trucks have the low range gearing, they don't ever use it but that's what a lot of people ask for, so we'll have to see what comes in the future. But overall, these trucks are nice to drive, and even though it's fairly wide, it obviously has a little less wheelbase than most trucks, even some of the mid-sized trucks that it competes with, but it does make it very agile. That's one good thing about the way this truck is built is that it's easy to get around. It's easy to maneuver that always helps out. So depending on where you live, this was really a good, what I call a big city truck as well. So if you have a lot of traffic and tight spaces to deal with, well, this makes things a little bit easier. I actually saw a post on Facebook recently where uh, a gentleman, will say, was selling his dually. And he said, somebody asked him, why are you selling it? Thought you really loved that truck. And he said, it's just too big for the city that I live in. So that's where something like this could come into play. As long as you're not using the capabilities of a dually, obviously I would never compare this to a dually because, well, it's not a full-size truck, for example, and definitely not heavy duty. But overall, it really is a solid truck to drive. With 280 horsepower, you might think, well, it's probably not gonna have enough horsepower, but it seems to do just fine getting down the road. And I don't have the experience of having a full load of people in the vehicle or that payload of up to 1,583 pounds or even the 5,000 pounds on the bumper back there, but I still feel like it's going to do pretty well in those situations. And what about the overall interior? Well, the interior is comfortable. It 
complements the ride quality nicely and sometimes you'll run into a situation where you have a good comfortable interior but the shocks and suspension are fairly stiff or very stiff and it just kind of negates the interior comfort. Well here you have a nice balance of both so that's a good thing. Nice steering wheel, comfortable. It's not heated but not necessarily a big deal. If you have a heated steering wheel in your vehicle I'm curious how often do you use it? Because I've never had a vehicle with that before and so I can't say how often I would use it especially here in Northwest Louisiana where well it likes to stay pretty warm. We're in the 60s today on December 13th as an example. But overall, a very nice driving experience. You have a driving mode for pretty much every situation you can face that this truck is capable of handling. And on the subject of weather with Northwest Louisiana weather, well, I have to say that a few years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, we had a very big snowstorm. Every once in a while that does happen here. That snow eventually froze into ice. And there were a couple of people from the Honda dealership who took their ridge lines, a ridge line home, so they could drive in those conditions. Being all-wheel drive, having the snow mode, they said it had absolutely no problem whatsoever. So overall, a great truck, simple technology to learn. You can't go wrong there. For those of you who are scared of this technology, some people out there might be, don't worry about it with Honda. There's not an overload here. It's not hard to learn. You could use the hunt and peck method to learn the technology in this truck. That's how easy it is. It's so simple, you don't even need really much of an owner's manual. And for things you might want to know about that maybe aren't so easy to just look at and say, oh, this is how I do that, even though I think you could do that pretty much all through the screen, is maybe pairing your phone. Well, guess what? That's what YouTube is for. There are videos all over the place to answer those types of questions.